All right, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for clicking on this Rank the Movies video. Um, yeah, it's another bonus. I just got home from seeing uh, the opening night Thursday, the early screenings of the new horror film X. So I thought I'd give my thoughts and opinions um, while they're fresh in my head um, since I just got home. And uh, yeah, so X is an A24 movie, which stands out that it's a little more art artistic than most films and it's a little more um graphic than uh most standard films um and that's kind of true with a lot of the a24 stuff they kind of give a little more leeway to creatives to um make their vision just make the vision and don't worry about um all the other stuff you know the ratings the rating just just make your vision um, I saw the trailers for it a bunch of times over, uh, through YouTube, uh, movies I've seen, uh, before. I think it was attached to both Scream, Studio 666, I want to say Nightmare Alley. I've seen, I've seen the trailer a couple of times. Um, and I was interested. I was genuinely interested in what this movie was because I was curious because it had such a smutty sounding plot that I really wanted to know what it actually was. Um, because I felt like it being A24, that the smuttiness of the plot really um, wasn't going to do it justice, especially because they ran an A24 trailer for a different movie from them, um, which I'm not sure how I feel about it. But, like, I realized I think most A24 trailers are cut in, like, the same fashion. And, um... Yeah, yeah, it, they're kind of, I, I felt that way. Like, I watched the trailer for, I can't think, it's a long-ass title. Um, yeah, everything, all at once, I can't remember uh, what the title is. But it felt like a bunch of other movie trailers I've watched, mostly the A24 stuff. Um, you know, that real quick, like, it's got an instrumental, it hits the beat and something, like somebody throws something, or it, it rapidly cuts and, um, because this is what the X trailer as well kind of felt like. It still had that rhythm. They have a rhythm to their trailers. And, um, yeah. So it's hard to take their trailers at face value. Because this one, if I had to tell you what the movie was based on its trailer, I would have been 80% correct. Um, the, the, but the 10%, the 20% I would have been wrong on actually made this movie way better than um my expectation was because i was expecting you know it's the trailers make it out that you know it takes place in the late 70s early 80s a group of pornographers go to a uh, farm to shoot a movie and they find out that the farmer's wife is, is there's something wrong with her maybe supernatural maybe not and you know people start dying the the part the 20% I'm wrong about is the farmer's wife and that there's nothing wrong with her. There's nothing supernatural about this movie. Um, it's just kind of a straight up slasher when you get there. Um, so the movie itself opens um, after the events. It's the next morning of the events mainly. Um, I think because it wants you to know that, yeah, this is a horror film, but it's not a normal, it's, it's not going to follow the typical like layout of modern horror films um it's gonna follow a slightly different layout and i know I, I can't think of them but i know i've seen other horror movies do this same thing where they flash to um the aftermath because they're not gonna have there's no there's not an opening kill there's not something going on right away but they want you to know hey yes you're in the right movie um you have the sheriff and a bunch of his deputies they're at the farmhouse um, you kind of see bodies covered, but you can't see whose body it is. So it's not uh, revealing who's dead and who's alive. Um, there's a TV on that's playing a preacher who is heard throughout this entire movie. Um, and he is just a Bible-beaten preacher talking about smut and how people need to not be smutty and that his daughter was taken away by smutty people. 
I'm just gonna say it, his daughter is one of the characters. I, I, the minute I heard him say, use the phrase his daughter, and then ran, that's all I needed to hear to go, up. Oh, one of the, one of the characters is his daughter. Like, there's no reason for that dialogue to exist unless, um, that payoff is there, uh, at the, at the end of the movie. So, uh, they move through the house, they eventually find themselves in the basement, where they see something, the audience doesn't see it, that uh, makes them question even more. We then jump 24 hours into the past to our uh, main character who's getting high, and I bet you guess can guess who the main character turns out to be. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Um, she is, they're about to leave um, her. They're leaving a strip club um, to go make this uh, porno because the proprietor of the strip club is a guy who has a lot of big money-making ideas. He wants to make a quick buck um, and get rich. And this is his newest one, is making a porno. Um, so that is what they are going out to do. He has two of his um, dancers. He's found a college um, film major to write the script and film his movie. He's bringing along his girlfriend. And then you have the uh, star of the movie who is, um, you know, the dude who's going to be having the sex. Um, they go off, and right away, um, they have a scene where they stop at a gas station, and they're grabbing stuff, and it's just more, you know, it, it's the setup stuff. Like, it's um, the our main girl talking, who's not Jenna Ortega. I know she's, like, um, one of the few people in this movie who I can look at and go, that's Jenna, only because she's in... Um, Scream, she was in Studio 666, both movies I saw, you know, in the last couple of months. Um, she is not the main character. She is the girlfriend of the filmmaker. Um, I, I can't, I looked up the girlfriend's, the main character's um, name, the actress's name, and I just can't remember it. I cannot remember it. For the life of me, cannot remember it. Um, anyways, it's just her like she wants to be a star. She doesn't care how she does it. She just wants to be famous. She wants people to remember her name. Um, and that's all she wants. And that's basically all the grocery store scene is. They then arrive at the farmhouse where you meet the old, uh, codger who lives there who has served in both World War I and World War II. And, um, yeah, he's just, he's just an old man. Just an old man with a wife who he doesn't want anyone messing with his wife. And he leads them to a, uh, Civil War era house. That's on his property. This whole thing takes place in Texas in 1979. Um, so he takes them to a Civil War era house that was built there during the Civil War. And um, four soldiers that never saw any action that they're renting as um, boarders. It's a boarding house. And so they're renting it out as boarders. He doesn't know what they're doing. He just knows they're paying him to rent it out. Uh, they start making their movie... Our main woman goes for a skinny dip in a pond, and there's an alligator. But of course, she doesn't actually get attacked by the alligator. Foreshadowing. Uh, but yeah, and eventually you meet the wife. Like, there's an actual interaction with the wife, who seems very normal, very, you know, not crazy, not possessed, just a very normal person. Um, because that's what they are. Because it's not... The, their rationale for what they're doing isn't anything like that. It's they have become so old that they can no longer pleasure each other physically. Um, he is afraid that if he tries, he's going to have a heart attack, and she feels despondent because now, you know, that's not part of her life anymore. Sex isn't there anymore. And they have all these young people coming around who are flaunting the fact that they are young and can have, you know, all this sex. And it's driving them both crazy to the point where they're killing people. Uh, these are not the first people they have ever killed. Um, so that's that's the rationale, and I'm like, that's actually really good. I kind of like that. I kind of like that rationale. Um, it's a weird rationale, but yeah, it takes. There's a good hour of movie before we get to the murders. But once we do, man, they, who they're fun. It's a fun movie. Um, I really liked it. Um, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed watching it. Even the parts of this movie that made me, like, the whole Reverend's Daughter 
angle, like, that I knew was coming. And there's a couple other points in this movie where, like, you can see what's coming. You know what's about to happen. If you've seen horror movies, you know what's about to happen. You know if, you know, you walk off with the dude carrying the shotgun, you're getting shotgunned in the chest, you know that's going to happen. Um, it's all about the build-up. It's about getting to that payoff. I mean, I think this movie does it all very well. And then when it does do something that isn't expected, um, it makes it even more interesting because you weren't expecting it. You were expecting the same old, same old. And then it just decides, eh, nope. And I, it does a really good job. I really enjoyed this movie. If you like horror movies, um, it's one to see. Like, it's, it's it gets it gets fairly gory um, at moments. Um, it tries to let you know it in the first 20 minutes of the movie by having them drive past a wreck of a semi that hit a cow. And you see the cow and the many pieces the cow is in and uh, everything that spills out of a cow. Because a cow, when hit by a semi, in this movie's logic, I'm not sure if this is real cow logic, uh, cow physics, cow physics, is that like boob physics in like late 90s, early 2000s? Cow physics, boob fi cow physics. Anyways, I'm not sure what the cow physics are because it looked kind of like the semi blashed it and the cow turned into a meat pinata. Um, to put it blank, the cow was a meat pinata on the road. Um, I also expected that to come back full circle, but um, I was wrong there. Um, but yeah, yeah, so they set it up early that there will be gore, um, it's just they wanted to tell a story first, like they wanted to do setup, and I'm cool with that, I think if you can do it right, you can make a horror movie that takes forever and a day to get to the actual murder, um, if, if you're setting it up, if you're setting up a good story, if you're telling a worthwhile story, um, if you have characters who are at least interesting enough to carry this story. And really it is the old couple who are carrying it. Um, not that any of the actors are bad. They're all fine. Like all the people who play the victims, the uh, the porn crew, they're fine actors. Like I had no problem with any anyone um, in this movie as, as far as the acting goes. I thought they had some good moments. There was some strong um, stuff going on and there were choices made. And there were good choices. I... Highly recommend if you're looking for a good um, horror film to check out this weekend or you know in the weeks to come. Definitely, if it's playing near, it's a playing in a cinema near you. Check out X. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was a really fun time. Um, I laughed. I laughed my butt off. But I'm one of those people who, when I, I I see something coming in a horror movie, I don't gasp. I I giggle because generally. It's it's just like it's the payoff. You laugh like ha ah, payoff, and there's some other moments that were just genuinely uh, funny. And it was good that the audience I was with had other people in there who also um, laugh at horror films because then I wasn't the only one laughing. I didn't have to be. Although there was a moment where there was a line of dialogue that uh, got me to laugh, and then something horrific happened. But I knew the horrific thing was coming. I just expected a little more time between the joke. And the horrific thing. Um, so I was laughing at the joke and the horrific thing happened. So I started laughing at the horrific thing. But I probably sounded like I was freaking out of my mind. And that I was that person who was insane and wanted to kill people. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if people in the theater thought that when they when they heard that laugh. Because it was a very guttural laugh. Um, because it was a laugh on top of a laugh. Uh, so yeah. So yeah, I enjoyed myself. It was an hour and 45 minutes well spent. Um... Yeah, definitely. If you've got the time, check it out. I liked I liked X. Um, yeah, and that's that's all I got. Um, yeah, check out X. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. You know the drill. Yeah, that's what you got to say in these videos. Um, I know there's a Hulu movie coming out this uh, weekend called Deep Water with Ben Affleck and Anna de Armas. As I look at my Knives Out poster, which is on the other side of my apartment... And I think I can read the names listed across the top of it in a font that at the eye doctor's office, probably still couldn't read. Uh, <laughs> hoping, hoping to read her name correctly. 
that's the, just a stupid move. Um, I might check that out. I don't know. I kind of want to, but at the same time, I, if I don't, I'm not going to be like, eh, I can check it out anytime. But I might check it out this weekend. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, but yeah, so uh, enjoy your weekend. Have fun. Have, have a good time. If you're going out to the theater, you know, check out X. Batman's pretty good. Death on the Nile is still out, and it, it was a de it was a good movie. I really enjoyed Cyrano. If that's still playing anywhere near you, check that one out. Um, yeah, have a good one.